How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. And what we're going to talk about today is why white America will lose and how to make money in a new economy. And this is going to be a good video for people that want to understand how to be more effective in this new world that is being built out and how not to be put yourself in a position to where you can't really understand how to evolve and elevate in this new world. So really quickly, I'm going to tell you a story based on what I'm talking about today, but something I watched last night. So last night I was watching this documentary on Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre and kind of their partnership that they had together, right? And one of the things I started to realize as I was watching the documentary, it's an old documentary that came out maybe 2016, 2017. However, I like watching old stuff. They talked about Jimmy Iovine really made his money in music by solving people's problems. So there was a story where there, there's this group called Nine Inch Nails. You may not know them. They're kind of like a techno rock group. They were really, really big in the 90s. And they were on a specific record label that was an independent label. And they had a lot of success with their first debut album on that label. And then they decided they no longer wanted to be on that end. They wanted to move to a major, but they were locked into a contract. And what happened is because they were so successful, all the major labels came at Nine Inch Nails and say, hey, we got a team full of lawyers. And what we'll do is we'll just try to use our lawyers to get you out of this contract, because that was typically what they did in that particular era. Right. And nobody was able to really get Nine Inch Nails to really move forward with that type of structure. Right. Because everybody was coming at them with the same play. We're going to put our lawyers to work. We're going to get you out of this contract. We're going to get you over here where we're at. What Jimmy Iovine did, if that's how you pronounce his name, and we're going back to like the 90s, like the mid 90s, where people still had landline phones. He had a phone in his bathroom. What he would do was he would wake up every day and everybody that was involved in that situation, whether it was the manager, whether it was uh, Trent Reznor or Reznor, who was the like kind of like the founder of Nine Inch Nails. The um, the what do you call the owner or the founder of the independent record label? All the principals that were involved in that particular situation. Iveen will call all of them up. And he did this every day for over a year. Every day he just kept calling them and talking to them and trying to build a relationship and understanding, OK, what's really going on and what do you really want? And he was consistent in doing that day in and day out and day in and day out. He didn't say, hey, you know what? I didn't get no traction on it yesterday. I'm going to quit it. I'm not going to pick it up for six more months. He just kept doing it and he kept doing it and he kept doing it. So what did he do? He built relationship because he kept talking to him. So over time, they realized this guy's not here for short term. He's here long term because he keeps talking to me. Then he was able to get Trent Reznor into a hotel room and he asked Trent, OK, so what do you want? If everything could work out your way, what do you want? And Trent said, hey, I want certain amount of money up front for my next project. He said, okay, cool. You got it. What else do you want? He said, I want my own label and I want to be able to sign people. And he was like, okay, cool. What else do you want? And it was a third thing that he said he wanted. He said, cool. You got that. Is there anything else you want? He was like, no, I'm cool. Right. And so Trent went to Interscope because of the relationship. Right. And then Trent handed him that sin record, which I don't know because y'all not into nine inch nails like that. It was that orange, that orange label record because they had already had that completed. So then he was able to give Iveen something that they could immediately take and put out into the market. So Jimmy Iveen focused on what is really the real leverage point in this world. And he was doing this in the 90s. Right. So we see why now he's where he's at, because he was ahead of his time by you know, 25, 30 years. Is one, you got to be able to manage creative people. Right. Two, you got to be able to solve problems. Now, let me tell you what Jimmy Iovine didn't do. Jimmy Iovine did not give Trent Reznor ideas around how to get out of the record deal. His job wasn't to come in as a consultant. His job was to come in and solve the problem. So it took a lot of work and there was no guarantee after he solved it that Trent was going to still sign with him. He could have told Trent yes to everything and Trent could have been like, well, I still don't want to sign with you. I'm going to go do something else. But he understand my leverage in this deal because everybody can go get the team of lawyers and sue the other record company to get them out of the deal. There's no leverage there. 
My leverage is going to be the relationship and my ability to communicate that I can solve this problem for this guy. Right. So I can get you out of the deal by instead of having this long drawn out court battle, because what we've seen in the record industry is that somebody will want to get off their previous label. So they try to sue the previous label to get out. It becomes this long drawn out court battle. A lot of the monies that are created by that uh, that band while they're going through the battle, they get frozen into an escrow. So now they're living off credit from the new record label, and it can take a long time to clear all that up, right? And then if you're not making big music for them while they're trying to clear it up, they're going to drop everything and get rid of you because you're not making money for them anyway. So why are we going to keep putting money into you? So he didn't want to go through that long, contracted legal battle just to get nine snails. His attitude is, I'm going to give everybody what they want, and I'm going to talk them out of that deal so I can get them over here. But he understood it's about problem solving. One of the biggest challenges I see when I'm trying to deal with contractors for my business is that they don't know how to solve problems. Now, they want to get paid like problem solvers, but they don't know how to solve problems. We have people now that have been so spoiled because of their access to Americans that live in other parts of the world. And they want to be top 5% income earners in their country by working for U.S. people, but they don't want to solve any problems. And they don't realize the importance of being able to solve problems, not just do tasks, right? You're going to run out of an opportunity to just be a task person. You got to start thinking about how can I put myself in a position where I can think of a way to solve a problem, then go solve the problem. Okay, so unless you're getting paid as a consultant, where your job is to generate ideas, you really want to focus on how do I actually go and build something that can solve a problem, not just be an idea generator. A lot of what you see online is people coming together and they just communicating what they think a problem is. We're, it's amazing to me when we have people that say, well, black people's problem is they need to go get their own independent political party. My question is, if that's what you believe to be true, how come you haven't created one yourself? But this is where people think their actual um, importance is, is how can I come up with ideas around something? So, you know, you got people doing six hour live streams talking about what they think the solution to the problem is, not what they're doing. Because they're not doing anything but talking. And this is on both sides of the ledger. You got males and females doing this whole big platforms based around what they think the problem is. They talk about the problem next week. They talk about the problem. OK, what's the solution to the problem that you're good and ready to go do? Can't tell you because I'm not going to do anything. If you work a nine to five job right now, do you solve problems on your job? Are you in a particular capacity in your job to where you can go solve problems? If not, can you find a job that allow you to do that? Because that's where your real leverage is going to be. Let me tell you another story I saw watching that documentary. And I see why Jimmy Iovine is where he's at right now today. So, you know, about the death row situation, right? So. We know that Dre left Ruthless and he was in a contract with them because essentially he was their like in-house producer. And they weren't paying him anymore uh, because they were trying to starve him out because he didn't want to produce for them anymore. Uh, but they didn't want to let him go. And they play these type of games in the record industry. So Dre had the chronic and he was signed to, quote unquote, Death Row Records, right? Which is that little label that Suge had at that time, but really was put out by Solar. Now, a lot of y'all not going to know what I'm talking about because y'all too young. So Dre already had the chronic. Dre went all over the country trying to get somebody to take on that record. And nobody wouldn't take it on. Now, if you've actually heard the chronic, you hear how good of a record that is, especially sonically. That might be one of the best records I've ever heard sonically in my life. Might be top two or three. The rest of them are rock records. They're not even rap records. So that might be top five, one of the best records I've heard sonically. The other four are going to be rock records. They're not even going to be rap. That record sonically is still ahead of its time because we've seen music now currently has gone back to how music sounded in the 80s. But the people that are listening to it weren't around in the 80s, so they don't even know they can't even compare the music. But music currently today has gone back to what it used to sound like in the 80s, where it's very basic. It's been very stripped down, where the chronic was extremely complex of a record. Right. Because at that time, you had the technology to do that type of stuff on record and Dre figured out how to actually do it. Because it was a long progression towards that. To me, that's the peak of his production. But nobody would actually agree to, 
you know, get that record and distribute it, it would they wouldn't do it. So he's thinking this can't be a good record if nobody would take it on and I have a track record of success in the industry. It's not like I've never done anything in the record industry. It's not as if I haven't made any money. So he started doubting the record being any good. So he finally was able to get a meeting with Iveen and like, I think the VP of Interscope. And Iveen heard it and was like, this sonically is one of the best records I've ever heard in my life. And Iveen come out of the rock space, right? And so he was like, I can't believe nobody has jumped on this record, but we're going to. And then he figured out what the situation was with Dre and Ruthless and the whole situation. He told him, hey, man, give me three weeks and I'll work this deal out for you. So he went behind the scenes. He got with Ruthless. He got with this person. He figured out what everybody wanted. And he was able to get Dre off that particular situation and get him into a new situation with, with Interscope to where they essentially partnered with Death Row to distribute their records. He solved the problem. He didn't tell Dre in the room, I'm just going to generate a bunch of ideas and whichever one works for you, that's the one you go with. He understood my value is solving this is the problem. He's stuck in this situation. He can't get out. And until he can get out, he can't make new music. So that's the real problem. Once we figure that out, we already got a record already set up to go once we figure it out. Then he said once they was able to get Dre over there, he told his, his radio team, right, back when people were really listening to the radio, here's some money. You go and get this thing played on the radio. Now, people don't know that you pay for radio, but you always pay for radio. Right. So he was able to get the money to get G thing played on the radio that blew up G thing that made that a big album. He figured out how to solve the problem. That's what I want you to understand. I'm going to give you another story. Years ago, Shaquille O'Neal was going to leave Orlando because Orlando didn't want to pay him. Right. And that went on for a long period of time where Orlando didn't want to pay him the money he felt like he could get. Shaquille felt like he was a hundred million dollar player. Orlando Magic didn't agree. They didn't want to pay him that kind of money. Jerry West went to Shaquille and say, how much money you want? He told him. He said, I'm going to go get your money and I'll be back to you. He didn't tell Shaquille O'Neal, oh, man, that's a lot of money. Will you take? He said, I'm going to go get your money. Then what Jerry West went and did is he went to bus and he solved the problem. And once he solved the problem, they was able to sign Shaquille O'Neal. Because the problem was nobody wanted to set the precedent of paying Shaq that kind of money that early in his career. And they didn't want to set precedent of raising that NBA pay scale. Jerry, he, Jerry West sold bus on if you bring this guy over here, this is going to be the foundation of your championship team. So the question you want to really ask yourself, right, if you care and if you actually want to be somebody in this particular country that has the ability to really improve their situation is do you solve problems? Do you do you have the ability? Do you just talk about them? Do you just have a bunch of ideas? Or are you willing to really go do the work to solve a problem and understanding that just because you do the work, there's no guarantee the problem is going to get solved? OK, if Eli Musk can figure out that robotic driving where you don't have to touch the wheel at all, it just drives you like like I robot. He's going to go down as the most important entrepreneur in the history of the world. But that's an extremely hard problem to solve, because not only do you got to solve the problem, you have to get governments to agree to let you use that particular vehicle on their roads. So you got two problems to solve. But if he can solve that problem, which is extremely complex and difficult, he'll go down as the most important entrepreneur or business person in the history of the world. Right. But most people don't want to solve that problem because you can work on that problem for 30 years and never figure it out. And then that's pretty much what you've done with your life is you have not figured out this problem. This is what you want to ask yourself. Do you solve problems? I know a lot of people that claim they work in tech. Very few, in my opinion, that I've experienced can actually solve problems. They can't. Because they should be able to realize what the problem is and solve it before I need to address it. That's a problem solver. A problem solver is not, I got to keep going to you and asking you, well, hey, can you? did you think this? Did you see about this? Because you're now creating a job for me. So now I got to make money on my end. Now I have to tell you what you need to do. That's too much work for me. I might as well fire you because you created another job for me and you don't pay me to work for you. I'm paying you to work for me. So you see why a lot of tech people will make good money 
but they won't get into that 1% income level because why they haven't made their mind up that I'm going to be a problem solver in this space. If you're in tech and you work in a particular space in tech for an extended period of time, you should be able to realize what are the problems in this space. Because why I've been in this space for an X number of years, then how do you go in that space and solve those problems? So they don't come back up. Right. But if all you want to do is clock in, do your little job and clock back out, you're going to make good money because of the space that you're in. But the problem is that as more and more people go in your space and your job and your position starts to become a commodity, you're going to see your pay start to go flat or start to go down. And the reason is why, because you're not a problem solver in the space, you're just in the space. Right. And so that's what people really got to understand. The way to make more money and the way to make a lot of money in this real new world that they're building out is you have to be able to solve the problem, not talk about the problem for 30 years. Not talk about there's a solution, not just come up with binary solutions because this is what you're being sold. You're being sold. It is a binary solution to every problem. Complex problems often have complex solutions to it. Just like there's not a binary solution to be able to move a car down the road and the driver don't ever have to control the car. That's not a binary solution. That's not a single factor solution to that. There's a lot of moving pieces going on at the same time. So you got to be able to solve all these moving pieces at the same time to make it safe to where a person can just sit back and drive down the road and they got to worry about that car crashing. You got to be able to do it in multiple weather conditions. You got to be able to do it over multiple terrains. You got to be able to do it at multiple speeds. You got to take into impact that other people are going to be bad drivers because I don't think they're going to be able to solve that problem until everybody's using the same technology because it's almost impossible for a computer to predict how bad humans drive. When you look at that iRobot, all the cars are robotic. There weren't human drivers plus robotic drivers. We're trying to solve the problem in real time when you got robotic drivers and human drivers at the same time, and a robot cannot comprehend how bad humans drive. Humans are terrible drivers. So that's what you want to understand is that what problems are you actually solving? Or you're going to be in the majority of the world to where you just sit back and you get presented stuff and you get told that that's a problem, but there's not going to be a solution because that's not what they're there for. And you talk about that issue, the next tomorrow there's another issue. And you talk about that issue, the tomorrow, and this is just going to be your life. But there will be no solution to the problems. So this is something I talk to people about all the time is that many people have education, but they don't have education that can solve their problems. And they don't see that they have a deficiency in their education. They think the value is talking about their problem all day. Why don't you go solve it? Don't you have an education? Yeah, I've got an education. How come you haven't solved the problem? Then you never tear from those people again. Right? So that's what I want you to understand. Talking about a problem is not a solution to the problem. It's a way to express yourself. It's a way to get it off your chest. How do we actually go solve the problem? And not how do we generate an idea to solve the problem? How do we actually solve it? The reason why we have a space program is because they were able to assemble people to go solve that problem. How do we put people and vehicles up into space? And how do we get them back safely? We lost people during trying to do that. People dodged in the space program. But they kept doing it to now it's safer than it's ever been. But we've lost a lot of people in that space program. Because those are very, very complex problems that needed to be solved. And you're going to fail trying to solve the problem. But if you don't put the work in, you'll never solve the problem. So we see why some countries have never put a person into space. Because they don't have the ability to solve the problem. It's not that they just don't have the money. They don't have the people in their country that can solve that type of problem. They don't have them. Right? So that's something I really want to communicate to you. Is that I consistently see, especially in business, people that have the ability to solve problems right? They create a lot of value for themselves. And people that don't have the ability, they'll make decent money, right? But they rarely hit that high income money because they can't solve certain problems. And when I'm looking to hire people to help me in my business, my biggest challenge is that they're not solving problems for me. They're creating another problem because they just want to get a check, but they don't want to solve problems. And I'm trying to hire people that can solve problems so I don't ever have to worry about it, right? 
I can't be working and trying to make money on what I do. Then I got to worry about whether or not you're doing what I need to do. I got to worry about I'm seeing something that you're missing, even though I'm paying you. I can't do both at the same time. Right. And so I think people don't understand when you want to hit certain levels of income, you have to show people that I can be a solution to your problem and you don't have to constantly come behind me to make sure I'm doing the right thing. You're confident that you can just put me out here in this particular field. I'm going to cover all the bases. Right. Because I take my career, my job so important that I'm going to make sure I do that to make sure I'm seen as a high value person in this particular industry. If you don't, that's cool. You know, that's not an issue. You can go live a good life because you have a lot of people around you who feel the same way about what they're doing. There's a lot of people showing up for a job just to get a check. And they don't have a desire to do anything past that. Right. They just want to show up on a job and get a check. There's a lot of people to where they don't have real solutions. They just have opinions. So you're not going to be by yourself. You'll be in the majority of people. They have no real solutions. They just have opinions because if you tell them, OK, if you feel that way, go implement it. And they'll disappear. You'll be talking by yourself because why they know they don't have a solution. They know they don't want to implement the solution. They know they just run their mouth. Right. And the Internet has created more opportunities for more people to run their mouth. When I was coming up, you couldn't talk to most people because why? How do you talk to them? You had to have a number or know them in person. Now you can talk to all these people. So everybody's exchanging communication. But you realize that most people ain't talking about nothing. They just talking. They ain't got nothing to say. That's why the people around them don't listen to nothing they're talking about because everybody knows they're not talking. You don't know them well enough to know they're just talking. But the people in their environment know they ain't talking about nothing. They're just talking. So that's what you really want to understand. What do I need to do? What do I need to learn? How do I need to train myself? How do I need to condition my brain to actually go solve problems? And then once you solve that problem, it's going to be another problem you got to solve. And that's going to just keep going until the day you pass away. Right? then you can leave a, a um, set of curriculum on how you solve certain problems so the people that come after you don't have to go solve the same problem. But if nobody goes and solves the problems, the problems don't go away. They just stay here. And people have become very complacent with staying in the problem. As long as I have somewhere to go to complain about the problem, I'm cool with it because I want really somebody else to come solve the problem on behalf of my group. Now, what else I want to talk about is that White people in the USA are going to lose. Why you want to lose with them? One of the things I witnessed when I got on this internet is people following white losers. So they're not following the white people that are actually successful in our society. They're following the white people that are losing. So why are you following losers of any group? But why are you following white losers? Is it because they're white? You think that's cool? Because it got to be all right because they're white folks. White people are going to lose in this society is because the economic situation is changing underneath their feet. The political situation is changing underneath their feet. And the majority of them are focused on things that are not going to change their situation. They got the same problem black folks got. They're focused on the wrong thing and they're focused on things that are not going to change their situation for the majority of those people. So it's always weird to me that black people you know, I understand why, because anti-blackness is the law of the land. And they have so much negative to say about black people. And I understand why, because I know that anti-blackness is the law of the land inside of the United States. And they don't talk about white wages being flat for white males. Their wages are flat. White. Um, you look at the Silicon Valley. The majority of the startups in Silicon Valley are being started by immigrants. In Silicon Valley, immigrants with those H-1B-1 visas are disproportionately working in tech compared to white people, right? Based on their percentage of the population, they have a disproportionate exposure in the tech space than white people in Silicon Valley. Now you go to other markets, you get more white people. But you go to Silicon Valley where a lot of the investment capital's at, where a lot of the startups are at, it's those immigrants with H-1B-1 visa, they're disproportionately represented in that particular area of tech. But the narrative is that it's about DEI. Well, you're not losing to 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 h1b1 people because of dui you're losing because the favor the the actual government and the tech industry in this particular part of the country and where a lot of the investment capital is is favoring these people right you look at how asians have manipulated the game 
they attacked down, so they went after black folks to get them out of access to a lot of these Ivy League schools. People don't see the long-term play because, I, like I said, we're dealing with people that haven't been taught how to solve problems. So I get why they don't see the long-term play, right? They push black people, essentially try to marginalize and neutralize black people in particular areas where they don't get the same access to these Ivy League schools that they used to get, right? Then what they do now is they take those roles, right? Because I know how to trade, I actually can see long-term where the direction of the situation is going. I know most people don't. They see three feet in front of their face, so it is what it is, right? Now what they do is because they get those spots, they now have more people in these places. So now what do they do? They graduate more people. So now what do they have? They have more legacy spots. Because if you notice, they didn't go out to legacy. Legacy is also affirmative action. It means that if you're the people that came before you, if they graduated from the school, you now have affirmative action to get into that particular school. You see, they didn't go out to those spots because why? They want to be legacy. So what they're going to do now is they're going to try to take the spots that was being utilized by black people. They bring in more people. They now have more legacy people. And then what will happen when their children and their descendants try to get into these schools? They're going to get in off legacy. So what are they going to do over the next 25, 30 years? They're going to dominate these particular spaces. It's not a five-year play. It's not a 10-year play. It's a 25, 30, 40-year play because they got to get in, get out, go into the workplace, have children, have those children get 18, 19 years old. And then now they apply to the schools. So this is a play that's not even really going to trigger to like 2050, 2055, 2060. That's when it's going to trigger. But white people are being told by entertainers and other people that the issue was that D is DEI. It's not DEI. Because the black people that was in there because of DEI, they were such a small percentage of the school, it doesn't even really matter. So they're going to get pushed out by Asians worrying about black folks, but that's the trick that has always worked in America. White people in America have always felt like, I don't want to compete with black people. So while they're looking at black folks, they're going to lose to somebody else. Right? So that's why I've been telling people, you trying to attach yourself to that boat, it's not going to win no more. Because this country is allowing other people into this particular society. And they're coming in with a, with a will to compete and they got a game plan to compete. But because of your conditioning, you still think white people is this upper echelon. And if I just could get around them, everything going to work out. They're not going to be the people that's going to be winning for the future. So what they're trying to do is push black people even further down. So they got some room for themselves. Because they know they're not going to have no room because they know they're not competitive with these other groups of people. But we still got people playing the 1965 game. Well, I just got to get around some white folks. Everything going to work out. I mean, I hope it works out for you. But I don't think that's a solution to your economic problem. I don't think that's a solution to your problem of, of access and mobility because this is not 1965. We're in a totally different era now. And one thing, if you actually study history, you have demographic changes. You have secular changes in history. You have trends in history. And once these things happen, it never goes back. Right? So Anglos pining for this old America is never going to happen because the economic situation is different. You cannot go back to a time in which the dollar was hinged to the gold standard and that that was essentially this economy. Well, we're never going back to that because we're never going to hinge the dollar back to gold. Right. So you can't go back to pre Nixon era. Right. You can't go back to an era in which the petrodollar did not exist. We're in the era of the petrodollar. That's the reality that we live in. There is no going back to no era besides that. So this is what I want people that actually have an understanding of what I'm saying. And they actually can. They can absorb the game that they're being given. Right. Is that you have to really understand these people are going to lose. I knew. Let me tell you when I knew they were going to lose. I, it became very apparent to me that they were going to lose this country when they started the Tea Party movement. And I sat back and watched the Tea Party movement get neutralized by the Republican Party. I said, these people are done. They're over. Right? 
because I was finally experienced enough because of my age to see it. And I was still relatively young then, but I had always been watching, observing, yada, 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 asking myself these questions. When I saw the Tea Party movement and what it stood for, and I saw that movement come up, and I watched the Republican Party go and marginalize the Tea Party movement, and all the top people in the Tea Party movement sold out for their little TV appearance, uh, for some attention. I watched them sell, sell out the Tea Party movement to try to get that little bit of money that they were going to get from television and radio. And I say, this thing's over with. It's over for these folks. They've lost it. They've lost the plot. They lost the country. So when they try to come back with Trump, Trump is essentially Tea Party 2.0. Then they lost that. Why did they lose it? The man ran on building a wall. He ran on that. He got elected. He got into office. His own party wouldn't let him build a wall. That's more confirmation that this thing is over. It's over. So why attach yourself to a loser? They can't win. Right? The capitalist structure, the billionaire capitalists have decided what direction they want to go with this country. And this is something that Ross Perot talked about in the 90s. What they're going to do is they're not going to bring um, they're not going to bring immigrant money up. They're going to bring American money down. He told people this in 1992 with the NAFTA bill because he was against NAFTA. He says the goal is not to bring American money up, not to bring Mexican money up. The goal is to bring American money down. Right. That's what they're getting ready to do, because he was advocating for economic protectionist. But the average white person don't know what economic protectionist is because they don't they don't understand economics. Right. Trump is an economic protectionist. They still don't understand what that is because they don't understand economics. So you got white people running around here talking about I'm for free markets. You can't be for free markets and also be an economic protectionist. Right. So Turning Point USA, when 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 Trump was in office, was talking about we're advocating for free markets. But they're supporting Trump. Trump is an economic protectionist. Economic protectionists don't believe in free markets, but you have to understand what economic protection is. Right. So he's these people are just here to entertain white people and they're going to get individually rich and the masses of white people are going to be broke with nothing. I talked about Charlie Kirk is from a state where almost half the white people in that state live in poverty. He has no solution for them. He has a solution for himself. So he goes to colleges and he was a real good entertainer, but there's no solution for him. I told y'all from the gate, and you can watch my old videos, Shapiro is a Zionist who plays the character of a conservative on television. I told people that three years ago. Now, all of a sudden, it came out. Everybody's so surprised. That's always who he's been. He's a Zionist politically who plays the role of a conservative on, in media. That's his character. He comes out of Hollywood. His people worked in the industry. He knows exactly what he's doing. And as long as he tells people what they want to hear and he plays that character, they will keep feeding into it because they're so ignorant around what's going on around them. They just want somebody to tell them what they want to hear. So they're going to lose. It's just this is what it's already in the cards. It's like I can look at a company and I tell you, man, this company not going to make it. The way they're operating, if they keep going down this road, it's not going to work out for them. I told people that Peloton was going to lose their market. What happened to them? They lost their market. I told you it was going to lose their market because I know fitness. Right? I know fitness. Fitness is a trend. It's never long term unless you like Weight Watchers or something. These people are going to lose. They've lost their opportunity to get control of this situation because everybody that came to them and told them what the situation was, they so worried about black people and what black people got going on and making sure they stay one step ahead of black people. They couldn't see that they was being the rug was being pulled out from up under them. So now in 2024, 2024, going into 2025, going into 2026, it's over for these folks. By 2030, 2035, 2040, you're going to start to really see how over it is for them. Right. And so if you're trying to jump on that bandwagon, you're going to be losing right with them because they're going to lose. They pretty, have already lost. It's just not apparent to the mainstream yet. But if you look at the economic data, it's over for them. They've lost. They so much money now. Ask yourself this question. You see so many white males today trying to become entertainers. 
That didn't used to exist 25, 30 years ago. And the reason why is because they don't really feel there's another way, to, there's any way to get really rich in this country anymore. That's something they used to put on black people. Only way you're going to get rich is through entertainment. You see so many white dudes now, they trying to make their money through entertainment, then flip it into something else like the guy that got the phone company or had the phone company. But he made his money in entertainment and flipped it into business. You see more and more white people trying to do that today, especially white males, because they really don't believe there's a way to get out and improve my economic situation doing anything else except that. That's how you know this thing is down. Because white men didn't used to believe it about their situation inside this country. They really used to believe I can go into business, I can go into the workplace, and I can become very, very successful based on that. They don't believe that anymore. Right? And they have these big examples of this. You see, me, Kevin, is still, he made all his money through entertainment. He did not make his money in real estate. He didn't make his money trading. He made his money as a YouTuber. That's how he became wealthy. Then he was able to go into other projects, but he didn't make his money as a fund manager. He made his money as a YouTuber. Right. So you got to really understand that this economy and this society has changed. These people have lost control of this situation because of what they've been focused on the past 25, 30 years. They're looking to keep somebody under them instead of trying to figure out how can I improve my situation and stop trying to figure out how to punch down. If you notice me, I don't build my platform on how I'm going to punch down on somebody else. I'm trying to move forward. I'm not trying to punch down. I ain't got time to worry about who under me. I got time to worry about trying to win. So my game is who's the most competitive group that I can go after? How can I compete with them, get to that next level, and then locate another group and, how, and keep moving up? Not how I'm going to try to keep somebody under me so I always got somebody up under me. They convince Anglos to always make sure that they got a floor up under them so they can always stay on top. So what well, that's going to be Native Americans or black people. They was cool as long as they had Native Americans or black people or maybe Hispanics that they knew was under them. So they felt like their place was secure. What they didn't realize is they're going to let people in this country and they're going to put them people over the top of you. And by the time they realize that's what's going on, it's going to be too late because they still don't see it, but it's going on every day. Right. These people that they're bringing in in this tech space, if you look at, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Ramaswamy. His mother was an MD. His father was an attorney. You don't really see them bringing in Indians that ain't got, that worked in the sugarcane fields. Right? You don't see them letting them kind of Indians in. Do they get some of them get come over here? A few. Right? But these East Asians they letting over here are extremely educated and extremely highly skilled. These are the people they letting over here. So you some white dude living in Palestine, Ohio, and you got a, a barely a, a high school education and you have no skills. And you let somebody tell you that the issue is DEI. And six months ago, the issue was critical race theory. And you let somebody feed it in your head. You don't understand what's going on around you and you're going to lose. And I don't want to be around you when you lose because you can't help me because you're losing. Right. And I'm not an entertainer, so I can't make no money off of you. By entertaining you while you're losing. But you're going to lose if you think that's what it is, is. You're being replaced by a more educated group of people who are very, very highly skilled. And they're in the they are in the positions that are about the future. So you don't have a trade school education where you can go work and do trades, right? And you also don't have a tech education. So you stuck in the middle, and those people are going to get replaced. Again, I'm gonna close out with this. If you watch. And I was going to do the video about that this, this uh, Saturday, but I decided to do something different. It was 92 election. Ross Perot was talking about why he didn't think Clinton should be president. He broke down from an economic standpoint. It wasn't a video I posted. It was another video. I was going to talk about it. I may still talk about it. He broke down showing economic data why Clinton should not be president of the United States based on how he managed the state of, I think, believe the state of Arkansas. Right? He broke that down. And he talked about how one of the uh, like one out of seven people in Arkansas worked in poultry because we know because of Tyson. So they worked in poultry. Right. And he said that those are stable jobs. They honest people. They good people because they, you know, they working. They not commit crimes. But those are not the jobs of the future. Now, this was in 1992. He was talking about this. Then he put up a piece of paper and he said that. 
these are the jobs of the future that we need to be preparing Americans to do. We need to be investing tax money and capital into training Americans to do this type of job. And you know what every last one of those jobs was? They was tech jobs. He was saying this in 1992. Right? But that wasn't the narrative in 1992. It was everything else. So if you were really trying to help your society and your governor or state in the early 90s, what you should have been trying to do was train your people for what the jobs are going to be in the 2040s and the 2020s and the 2030s. But instead, I'm just helping you learn how to go into a factory and pluck chickens. And if you go into those factories now, who's in those jobs? Bunch of immigrants. Because I know somebody that worked in Tennessee, worked in processing. Right. They got the same thing out there in Gainesville, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. They numbered a bunch of Mexicans up in there. You see what I'm saying? So what Perot was telling the American people is you're not being prepared for the future. You're being prepared for what was a good job 30 years ago. Those aren't good jobs anymore. And you're not going to have nothing in 25, 30 years because we're not investing in Americans to make sure that they are competitive on a world level. So this is why they can bring somebody else over from another country who are going to outskill you and out educate you because you haven't been prepared by the people around you to be competitive with those people. And you think they have being told that the issue is DEI. This little 1% of black people out of college, that's the issue. So if you take that 1% away, now what you got, you still ain't got nothing different. So that's what you got to understand is that people are not being prepared for what the future is. They've already lost it. I tell you again, when they when the Tea Party went under, it was over for them. Nobody's going to tell them that because we still make money off these people. So we're not going to tell them that it's over, but it's over when they lost. When that movement went under, I said they're done because they lost a movement. And that was a best chance in 25, 30 years of getting control of what they said they want to get control of. Once they got rid of that, say it's over and they sat back and they allowed the Republican Party to marginalize them. Then those group of people went away. They produced a whole new group of political entertainers now that they currently got now. And they're going to do the same thing over and over again. Man, I knew who Tucker Carlson was 20 years ago. Right? This dude, dude is an entertainer. Right? Because he was a libertarian first. Now he owned whatever he owned. But it's, it's cool. He's a good entertainer. He learned how to reinvent himself just like P uh, Puff did. So what I really want to encourage you is don't get caught up in this stuff. Don't think by aligning yourself with a bunch of people that are losing. Let me explain something to you. The whole red pill space online is a bunch of white dudes that were losing. Right? They a bunch of white dudes. Why would I listen to them? They can't even help me with nothing. You understand what I'm trying to do? Why would I deal with a bunch of white men that are losing in America? So what white men do when they lose in America, they blame other people. That's what they've been programmed to do. They never look at themselves and why they're losing in America, a country that's set up for you to be successful. See, it's because I've been conditioned a certain way. See, my mama told me when I was real, real young that if a white man in America don't have a job, it's because he's lazy. If you ever work for a certain amount of time, you'll learn just by working that if you're a white man in most places in this country and you have average intelligence, and you got half a brain and you're not like an alcoholic or a drug abuser. If you go into a company, they will try to put you in some type of managerial role. You just got to be an average intelligence, have half a brain. Don't be a drug abuser. Don't be an alcoholic. Come to work on time. They'll try to put you in the management. So, you know, because I know that because I worked in retail, I worked in grocery when I was in high school. I seen the white dudes that was in management. They was they had half a brain. Right. They weren't really that smart. I went to high school with one of them. He really wasn't that smart. He was assistant manager of the store I worked at. I went to high school with the dude. Because I know that these dudes that sitting on the Internet that are white males and they talking about woe is me. The world is not fair. Yada, yada, yada. You ain't got nothing going for yourself. You don't have no prospects for the future. They're losers. Why would I pay any attention to them? Why would I hang around the losers of a group of people? They're not even the winners of white people. They're the losers. Right? So why would I try to replicate what they've done for black folks? 
That don't even make no sense. But this is what these people, have, because they just so happy to, well, I'm a, if white people do it, it got to be all right. So then I'm going to do it because I think that's what I need to be doing. But they're losers. So why would I re replicate what a bunch of losers are doing? Then these Negroes jump on YouTube and they talk about black people. And I'm looking at them like y'all are a bunch of idiots because you're replicating a social movement created by a bunch of white losers. Who are too stupid to realize all I got to do is move to like uh, Huntsville, Alabama. All I got to do is move to like Pensacola, Florida and get my act together a little bit. And the way the society is built, it'll put me in position to be a winner because that's how this country was set up. It was set up for white men to win. So you a white man in this country, you can't figure out how to get a win. You are a loser. Why well, am I listening to anything you got to say? But because I'm really from the South and I've been to different parts of the South and I've seen these whole white cities where everybody's on meth and everybody laying on top of each other. I don't get impressed by that type of stuff. I don't get impressed by them like that. Y'all do because y'all ain't been around enough of them. I done seen them on all different type of levels. So I'm just not impressed by them. Right? They're going to lose. They pretty much already lost. And I said again, whether Trump gets in or Trump don't get in, this they last hurrah politically this is it i think trump gonna win and i'm not here to do no political commentary with y'all i think trump gonna win i just i just do to me the numbers is pointing out but we got to see you never know how the election gonna turn out but even if trump wins they got four years of glory after that it's over for them if trump don't win it's over for them so either way it's over for them it's over for them before the end of this decade they're done they had they run in america and because when people came and tried to explain it and what was going on, because they were so worried about punching down and making sure they got a little bit more than a black person, a little bit more than a woman, or a little bit more than a, a Latino, and they felt good about themselves, they didn't realize where the country was going and how they were going to lose a position to technology, which is going to be the biggest thing. They were making too much money to where the capitalists no longer wanted to pay them for what they were producing. That's why we seen like the Carolinas lose all their manufacturing all go south of the border. Right. So they because they didn't understand those things. They lost it. And so I'm not going to hang around you because I know you don't know what's going on and you can't help me with anything. Because you're a loser and I'm not just so impressed that because somebody got white skin, they're the best thing since sliced bread. You got to better help me with something. You can't help me with nothing because you're a loser. All your ideas are being losers. So why I'm a loser with you? I'm trying to win. I ain't trying to be a loser. But we see with black folks, because anti-blackness is a law of the land, they'll rather lose with some white folks than try to win with some black people. That's their business because they're not going to be allowed into elite white circles. Right? That's not going to work for them. And we see with some of them that y'all thought was really elite white people, they got showed just how elite they was when they got the white folks wrong. But we ain't going to talk about that. That's a different part of the story. So that's all I want to say. I don't want to be here too long. I'm at 53 minutes. I can't believe I've been talking this long. We're going to read these super chats and we're going to keep pushing. So Ray Gun man, appreciate the $2 super chat. Ori man, appreciate the $4, the $4.99. Mr. Moore man, I appreciate the $10 super chat. Mr. Harley, appreciate the $9.99 super chat, $10. Mr. Moore, appreciate the $4.99. Mr. Ashe, problem solved was a rare. Thanks for a great presentation. Is Ash rhymes with cash? Okay, appreciate it. Mr. Brian Ash, appreciate the $20. So, what's up with Erica? Erica Williams, classic clown, smart for money. Appreciate the $5. The Asians put the money into the hard money deals on blacks in Houston. Why? Five families, three Jewish, two Italian, 80% of the third and fifth ward. And you talked about that before, and that's real. That's real. Erica Williams. Now Houston's planning to try, appreciate the $5. Now Houston's planning trying to change the duplex game in Houston because 95% of the duplex builders are Hispanic and black. Too late, we have a building. I feel you. Yeah, I learned when I went down to Houston, it's called the Association, of, I think it's called AMAC, the Association of Minority Contractors in Houston. They all Latinos. Now, I didn't know being a Latino was a minority in Houston, but from a United States level, they, 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 uh, they're minorities. So AMAC, like in Cleveland and Philadelphia, is black folks. You go down to Houston, Texas, it's all Latinos. They're trying to get them government contracts. I ain't mad at them either. Get them. Ain't nobody else trying to get them. 
Erica Williams, appreciate the five dollars. 18 to 30 year old white male struggling. So many parents online video complaining about them living at home, no college playing video games all day. Erica, they just it's what has happened, Eric, in my opinion, right? America got a little bit harder for them, and they just they just out of shape. Because for years in this country, you just had to be a white man to just show up. And people would bend over for you. My grandmother worked in a cafeteria. She retired from this cafeteria she worked in. She trained white men to work in that cafeteria, and they put them white men as managers, and they made her a supervisor. Right? But she trained them. So they didn't know nothing. A member of my family had a graduate degree and they had to go get a graduate degree to work somewhere. And white men that worked at that same place just had a bachelor's degree. For them to even get their foot in the door, they had to get a graduate degree. We see once it got a little bit harder for them, they was outdone because they was never good in the first place. They was born into a system that was set up for them to be successful. Once they actually had to put some work in, we saw how many of them were average. That's why I tell people all the time, I'm just really not impressed because I spent enough time around them to realize how many of them are just really average people. They're just average. It's just they got white skin. And some of our people are so hung up on that skin color, they ain't got to do nothing else but just be white. The code in nurse appreciate the 1999. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Uh, the positive comments. Mr. Pascal, it's funny how the outsource semiconductor is not a U.S. is scrambling to stop China. Definitely. And they got to do a, not a lot of infrastructure building to build foundries and all these things. But we should have been doing that in the 90s. Right. We should have been building infrastructure in the tech space in the 90s. So now in this particular era, we already up to speed because they just gave some money to TSMC to build. Right. But our eyes went on the ball. Cedric Webb, man, appreciate the $5 super chat. Black Panther, AJ, we losing the Indians. But the people that have problems with their own community, your thoughts, great show. Shout out to Erica as well. I don't really understand the question, but I appreciate the $5 super chat. So let me go through some of these comments before we get up on out of here. What's going on to GC? What's going on to Miss Buckingham? What's going on to Mr. Preston? Navy vet, what's up with it? And if you could, like the uh, like the video. What's going on to Leo Johnson? That's payola. Yeah, payola been going around in the record industry for years, and it ain't going away. But I'm talking about real payola. I'm not talking about uh, this stuff that people talk about on the internet, talking about some podcast payola. There's no federal rules against somebody paying to be on a podcast. We got, like I said again, that's the entertainment that is blending into the real world. There's never not been a time where it's radio that has not done payola, right? It's just how you do it. But they've all done it. There is no, it's very few people, in my opinion, got big in music organically. They got big because somebody paid for them to get big. Right? It's very few people, in my opinion, got big in music just because it was just organic like that. That's not how the music industry works. You can solve the problem without being in this space. I feel you. So if you can do that, I encourage you to go do it. So Ms. Buckingham says the same anti-black racism that's benefited them in the economic warfare is being used against them in economic warfare. Definitely. And they, they never going to figure it out. That's why I ain't worried about it. You know, Ms. Buckingham, they're going to keep bringing people into this country. It's never going to stop. Because if they were trying to stop it, they would have stopped it by now. There was a it was an article and I could not find it because I'd be reading so much stuff. And I think this woman was a... Uh, she either with the World Bank and the IMF, and she talked about how America was able to manage their inflation problem by letting immigrants in. And that's why I keep telling people, when you don't understand, I'm talking about you personally, but when a person does not understand the economic piece, they allow entertainers and politicians to feed their head up with a bunch of nonsense. That's not what's going on, right? You know, we got to look, when we ever look, and we ever sit back and study these ethnic migrations to the United States, 100% of the time, there was an economic justification for it. They never let people over here, rarely, if not ever, because, oh, it's the right thing to do. No, you have an economic fit in this country. That's why we're bringing you over here. They don't just let people over here just because they want to bring them over here. It don't work that way.
So Asians get so many Ivy League schools and not even be a 10% of the American population. Definitely. They're going to get more of them now because, like I said, once they become legacy, now their children going to get in. That's their play. That's been their play the whole game. They just had to try to figure out how they can get more spots freed up by getting black people out of there. Right? Because they want all those spots. You know, so I, that's what I'm saying. White people thinking they made some type of uh, uh, win by getting black people out of there. It's just... Like I said, they've never been able to really look at the situation because in their mind, the way America framed everything, it's always white, black. Right. They don't see nothing else. So they're going to get blindsided by that. So give it about another 10, 20 years when they start producing more and more legacy people. Because if you look at Vivek, Vivek's children can go to Harvard because he went. But he's going to get in front of white folks to talk about Mary. That's not how his children going to get into Harvard, though. His children going to get into Harvard because he went to Harvard and he graduated. But he knows white people will buy merit from him. They'll buy that from him. And they'll buy that story. He won't talk about the fact that he got the Soros scholarship because he was an anchor baby. See, he's not going to bring that up. And I had a dude on, on the internet already say, well, that was a merit-based scholarship. No, it wasn't. It was a scholarship because he was gray. He had degrees and he was a children of immigrants. Right? But he knows the lie that they want to hear. White people in America want to believe that when it's everybody else is married, when it's them, they're supposed to get affirmative action. So you just sell that to them because that's what they're buying. So Alexa says and reported that the acceptance is having increased like they thought it would. Alexa, give it 10, 15 more years. This is a long-term play, right? This is not a two, three-year play. This is a long, this is a 2050 play. If you study Asian history, right? Their planning is 100 years. Their planning is 200 years. Their planning is 50 years. So let me give an example. You can call it the War of Vietnam Independence. You can call it the Vietnamese War, whichever one you want to call it, right? Ho Chi Minh told his people, we have a 50-year plan to defeat the United States. He didn't tell his people we're going to defeat the United States in three years. He says, we have a 50-year plan to defeat the U.S. That's how, that's how we plan this war out. I spoke to a woman that lives in Vietnam right now. She told me that their economic plan for their country, the stage that they're in, that stage is not even over till 2045. So it don't matter what happens this year, right? China has a 100 year plan for communism. They're nowhere near, they're nowhere near year 100. Asians historically are long-term planners. In America, we got a microwave situation. It got to happen in 90 days or else it's not going to work. Right? So when I'm dealing with Asians and I know they're trying to push something, I know they already thinking long term because that's their culture. Their culture is long term thinking. And all of their movements against the West, they're all based on long term plans. The communists in China believe that they're going to outlast capitalism. That's why they're not fighting it because they believe they're going to outlast it. Because they believe capitalism is not sustainable. So I don't have to fight. I just have to let it fall underneath its own weight. So that's why their perspective on it is different than the Russians. The Russians try to compete directly with the United States. The communist uh, attitude is we just going to hang around long enough. And these people, go, they're going to body themselves. We ain't going to fight them. They're going to do it to themselves. So they look at America and they see all the issues we have. And they say, yeah, that's what's going to happen. So when I'm dealing with Asians, I know I'm dealing with people. Culturally, they have very long-term planning. They're not thinking one year or two years. That's how Americans think. We think quarter to quarter. They think in 50, 100, 250, 300, 1,000. Because if you go to China right now, the year is not 2024. That's our year. Started by the uh, the Romans. They in a whole other year. Same thing with my Ethiopian people. Their calendar is different too. They're not even on our time schedule. I know agents that have weekend schools, they go to private organizations, clubs, and prepare for these standardized tests and stuff as well. Yeah, they study to the test, something they're really good at, right? They figure out what the test is, and they study to that, right? Erica says, watch multiple TikToks of white guys with low GPA showing they got into Ivy League schools. Them people mad, mad. I feel you. They're going to keep getting in. Erica, they don't talk about when I was in college, the white fraternities had the answers to all the tests. Right. And so they just will pass it out during the semester. They already had an answer to the test. You know what I'm saying? These people are really not exceptional like that. They just sold people on that through like media.
Xanatos, black folks don't want to do for self, at least get around the people that are working on winning Asians and even Latinos. But see, this is the thing, Mr. Clutch, many black people are doing for self. So I just think this idea that we see on the internet that black people are so deficient, it's an internet thing because it's not in the real world. It's very much an internet thing, in my opinion, because we talked about before, anti-blackness is the law of the land in America. So it's not hard to find black people that engage in anti-blackness because they have been normalized that that's how they're supposed to conduct themselves, right? Where Asians, you have Asian groups that literally hate each other. Like they hate each other. They've been going to war against each other for hundreds of years and you won't find any of them creating media against each other or their own group. They just won't do it. It's not their culture, right? And so black people eventually have to come to terms that anti-blackness is a big aspect of black culture, which is why they have so many issues of black culture because their issue is not black culture. Is The issue is that they have accepted anti-blackness as normal, right? And when you deal with other groups, they have never accepted that being against their own group is normalized. That's unacceptable to them. It's only acceptable to black people on the internet. As if they're going to get a prop for that. I don't know any exceptional black person in the real world. And I'm not talking about entertainers. I'm talking about real world people that actually espouse anti-blackness as being normal. I don't know them. I don't say they don't exist. They're just not part of my network. Right? Right. So there's black people doing for self all the time. There's always have been and always will be. Maybe but I have a different perspective because I'm from the South and I know people that got land and they got crops and the whole nine yards. Right. But thanks for the comment. Say Kirk is such a parent. He's an entertainer. So he's going to do that entertainment money. You know, dudes made himself a millionaire with a community college degree. He's not going to stop what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Because there was no other way in the world he would have made himself a millionaire except what he's doing right now today. You know what I'm saying? So he's not going to kill the golden goose. He's made himself a multi-millionaire doing what he's doing. He got a community college degree. He don't even have no real skill set except what he's currently doing. So he's not going gonna to ride that train till it stops. Right? So that's just how that's going to work. So Ray Gunn said, my college ex professor explained this to me 10 years ago, as long as black people on the bottom, white white folks are good in their minds. Definitely. It's how they set this country up. Because for years, it was just white and black folks in here. So white people were just concerned about black people. That's why you see after the Civil War, if you go do the history, as black people started to become economically mobile, white people reacted with violence. Because they couldn't stand that black people who just 25, 30 years ahead of time had been slaves. Now they're doing better than us. They couldn't take that. It was hurt to their ego because they have been taught black people was inferior. That was essentially why they were in the position that they were in. So then once the playing field was leveled a little bit and black people started to move up, then they reacted with violence. And then they came in with Jim Crow laws and black codes and all because we got to keep these people under us because psychologically they can't take it. Right. And black people weren't beating them in sports entertainment. They was beating them in business. They was beating them in politics. And they couldn't take that. So they literally went to violence to try to get black people to stop doing that. Right. Because it was an ego thing for them. So that's really how they feel. So they focus on black people because that's their culture and they don't see nothing else. Right. And black people focus on how can I attach myself to white people that are losing because they're the easiest white folks to be around. And I just feel good. I'm around some white folks, but they're losers. Why do you want to be around them? I don't know. I just want to be around some white people. I feel better. So I tell you, have at it. Both of them deserve each other. So Miss Buckingham says the tech bubble popped in the 2000s. It depends on what you mean by popped. 
Amazon still here, Apple still here, Microsoft is still here. Um, so what do we mean by popped? Because what we had in the early 2000s, we had a tech boom, and we had a because everybody was looking to put money behind tech. We had a lot of companies get valuations with no real business model. But Texas Instruments still here, Microsoft is still here, Amazon still here, Apple still here. Like a lot of the tech companies that had real business models that actually had a way to make money, they're still here. They're stronger than ever. Because the time to buy into tech was right after the right after the 2000s. That was the time to buy in and put every dollar you had into tech. That was really the time to buy in. Erica says, Arkansas got to pull tech folks to Arkansas now for Walmart. Definitely. You know, they don't want to educate their population. That's something we talked about before, Erica, in the South. Is the lack of desire to educate your population to build them up. And you got the people and you got the manpower. But they just, a lot of these, these governments and these, these people in the South, you know, I talk about Florida. They keep their population concerned with everything else. Instead of what can we do to improve our people to make them more highly skilled, to make them more competitive not only nationally, but also internationally. Then when you need some labor, then you got to bring them in from somewhere else. And, you know, but they can keep them distracted with, oh, you know, I'm changing this law, I'm changing this law. You know, they're not really doing a lot, but it is what it is. That's how people, that's what people want. Ant dog, what's up? The ant, that's what Manisville comes from, losing white men. I mean, it is what it is, bro. I've been saying that it's a bunch of tricks in a circle, mad. And I don't hang around tricks. You know, the meat tricks here to get broke on. And I mean any kind of tricking. You can't, with me, dog, ain't no shades to that. Uh, we, don't, we don't involve with none of it. But like I say, it's the internet, so it's different. So to me, the, the Manisfield to me on the black side was a bunch of tricks that was mad because they couldn't trick at the level that they wanted to. So they were just mad all the time. But I mean, if you want to trick at a high level, go make you some more money. You see what Puff was doing? Puff can trick like that because Puff got a certain type of paper. You see what, uh, what's the name of that white dude that was real big on the internet like six, seven years ago? Ran all the YouTube ads. Lopez. Lopez was able to trick like that because Lopez was getting a certain type of money. Why are you mad at the woman because you can't trick at a level that you want to trick at? This don't make no sense, right? But I know what motivates a trick. Tricks want to trick at higher levels. That's why they're going overseas, because they can take the money they make in America and trick at a higher level overseas. I don't entertain nothing other people got to say, because I don't, I don't have a business model to get money out of a trick. So why do I interact with them? So that's why they never had nothing for me. But that's me, everybody different. But I'm not finna sit back and listen to Tricks talk for six hours, man. I got too much stuff to do. But big up to them. But they need to go make some money, man, so they can trick at a higher level instead of being mad at women, bro. Women ain't got nothing to do with that. Go get you some money. Yeah, tuck a hella pay. Hella pay. But Eric, I remember when he, when Ron Paul was not allowed to do the Republican thing, I forgot what you call it, in Tampa. That was a year they had the Republican convention in Tampa. Ron Paul did his, uh, whatever you want to call it, convention at USF in Tampa. Tucker was the MC for that. So Tucker at one time was this hella libertarian dude. But then he kind of, I guess he got on Fox and had to change up the format. You know, it is what it is. But yeah, Tucker hella paid, but Tucker come from people that got money. Tucker come from money. Like, Tucker come from big paper. He don't tell people that, but that's the real. And he got a lot of Indians around him, to tell the truth. Answers, where were they when their answers were stealing? This is the thing, Ms. Buckingham. There's always been an elite class. 
So they just never was in that elite class. They was the poor white folks. And they wasn't able or their, parent, their people mismanaged situations that they were given by this government to get economic mobility, like the Homestead Act, like the GI Bill. They just mismanaged it. They was too stupid. Right? Because this government did everything it could do to improve the lives of white folks post-1900. Did everything they could do. Gave them welfare, right? Gave them, gave them the Homestead Act, gave them the GI Bill, gave them the New Deal. This government did everything it could do to improve the lives of white folks. So their ancestors just mismanaged all those entitlements and all those government programs. They just mismanaged it. They weren't smart enough to take advantage of it. So now they don't have nothing to show for it, but now it's black folks' fault. Man, please. These people got every advantage in the world by this government. Okay, so Erica says they made a new category called deaths of despair and saying drug use and suicide are all the time. So, yeah, if, Erica, if you look at how um, pills and meth, it's always been meth, but then it was pills, this fentanyl, it, it's just destroying these folks. But it's not getting no attention because they don't want that to be the narrative around their people. But if you go to like Tennessee, Virginia, especially West Virginia, Florida, the early 2000s, pills ran through the white folks like I ain't never seen nothing in my life. Half the, half the state of white people in, in Florida, early 2000s, was strung out on oxycodone. It was on it bad. It was bad. Like you would go to certain parts of Florida, they just be walking around strung out. Whole city. But they don't want that to get out because they don't want that to be their narrative. Now, it was our people on crack. They put that all over the world. But when it's day folks, they're going to keep a damper on that. But if you go to like Tennessee, West Virginia, uh, some parts of Virginia, Iowa, uh, a lot of the Midwestern states, Nebraska, man, them people on them drugs so bad, it ain't no telling. And it's destroying them. And they just, the white people, money just going to sit back and let them fall off. They don't care about them folks. They never did. They're going to let them fall off. They don't got what use they want to get out of them people. They don't have no use for them no more. They ain't got no factory for them to work in. What's up with Miss Farida James? Everything you're talking about is true. I work in the fame tech space and see it myself. I never understand my tech abilities on the job. Everyone else is trying to figure it out. Do what you got to do. It's a lot of money in there. And it's the, it's, the, it's the space of the future, right? So I encourage you just to keep pushing forward. Get your money. It's so much money in tech. It's ridiculous. It's going to be even more money. Than it's not going anywhere, right? It's impossible for the tech space to go unless they come out of space with a big EMP. Then we got to start all over. Everybody's going to be broke, so you ain't got to worry about it. But as long as everything maintains where it's at, I would encourage you to keep pushing, keep upskilling, learn how to solve problems, keep getting that money because the money not going nowhere. That's the, that's where the growth is at. Right. A lot of these other areas are going to contract. It's going we're going to have a world, in my opinion, of what either you you can work your skill with your hands, you know how to fix stuff, repair stuff, build stuff, or you got some type of tech skill or you just know how to make money with business. Everybody in the middle going to get squeezed out. That's where they're taking this game. They're going to just squeeze you out. T man, I appreciate the five dollar super chat. Mr. Darkman Jeff, appreciate the five dollars. Mr. Russell, I see the mediocrity of plenty growing up around in folks in Chicago. We used to call it white boy magic, advancing through life no matter how mediocre gray show. Yeah, it's real. I mean, but this country was set up for them to be successful. So it just kind of followed that out, right? It just followed through with that. It was set up for them to be successful. I mean, it's just, it's just easy. I saw it growing up. Uh, here we learn, grow daily. Appreciate the five dollar super chat, Mr. Clutch. Appreciate the five dollar super chat. Thank, thank Asians doing America. Black Americans doing place like Europe. But they're too what where they're too focused on Muslims once we step it up. I feel you. Well, Mr. Clutch, man, you got to lead the way, baby. Put the program together, lead the way. But what black people is getting in media is they need to go 
to Central South America and Asia and trick off and be a bigger trick. That's what that's the message they're getting. And they learned that from white tricks. See, I remember when these white dudes is creating blogs and talking about how they went to Colombia and they tricked off. They went to DR and they tricked off. They went to Africa and they tricked off. My brother-in-law, a white dude, was working for them. He was in Africa tricking off with teenagers and got arrested. And they go call the job and tell him, I need y'all to get me out of Africa. I would have hung up on his ass. Get yourself out. You got yourself in the position. So they learn from these white dudes who tricked off in Asia and all that and then going to turn around and say, well, this the, is this the promised land for the black man. Go to these places and be a trick like them. I don't want to replicate what they're doing in these areas. I used to be on Kazaa back in the day, if you remember that. Man, I seen some of the stuff these dudes are doing in Asia. I say, these people are evil. Right? They got an evil spirit. I ain't going to follow that. So I agree with you. Can we put together a curriculum to teach black people how to do that? Can we put together networks to allow them to do that? Or are we just going to try to sell black men courses on how to go to Asia and Central and South America and DR and be a bigger trick and to be a, be a, a bigger whoremonger? Is that what we're going to do? So it's all in what our focus is. But, you know, I think some of these dudes, man, tricking is, is in their spirit. They bound up in that spirit. I don't think they can change themselves unless they go to God and ask for forgiveness and change their life. I don't think with their own devices, I don't think they can change themselves. I don't. I think it's in their blood. Mel says, I've seen groups for Indians and white people that don't include white. I've seen groups for only Indians and Asians that don't include white folks. I feel you. Ethiopia has a 13-month calendar. Yeah, and it's also not 2024 in Ethiopia either. I forgot what year they on. Ant Dog says, I see it every day in tech. So far, white folks hold higher ranking position when Raleigh don't know much about it. Yeah, I've seen that. It's just how it is. You know, in Florida, for a very long time, it's kind of changed now. If you was an average-looking white chick, you was blonde, you could get a decent receptionist job. Just be an average looking white chick. Because they wanted to look at an average look. They wanted to look at a pretty white chick as a receptionist. Like, that's how they set this country up, bro. Ant Dog says, Indians have a pipeline in tech, too. They aren't that smart. They just apply themselves. Definitely. They have to apply. A lot of this stuff, and no disrespect to the tech space, I don't think you got to be a genius to get it. I think what Ant say, you just got to apply yourself. But they will apply themselves, right? They will go in very, very focused, and they'll make that their life. Because I hear Ant Dog out here in Atlanta, they had tech with two people living in a one-bedroom in school. And they just go to class, come home to sleep, go to class, and they're going to do that till they graduate. Because the living conditions in Atlanta, for a lot of them, is better than what they had in India. So they living good over here, even though they got two people in the one bedroom. But you're right. They're not geniuses. They just apply themselves. Right? But they was programmed to apply themselves and focus on that and don't worry about nothing else. So you ain't going to see a bunch of Indians in no red, in no red pill space. You know, you just see a, 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 Su a Sudanese dude pushing that mess. Now, he won't push that mess in Sudan. He come over here and try to push that on us. Big up to Eric, a classic clown, five more dollars. And Bob was in office. Folks saw that America was gone. Two educated married black folks are scary. The beginning of the anti lease speeches. Eric, they was worried about getting pushed out. I've known this for years because I was raised around white folks. They lie when they say they just want white pe black people to improve themselves and get educated. They see you as competition now. And they, they In their mind, they believe that, you know what? I might not be as good as I think I am. Right. My my whole life, I've noticed that white people, but especially white men. Are only comfortable if black men are really good in sports and entertainment. Because they'll accept that you better than me in that space. Once you get outside of that space and they see that you better than them, they don't like that. And they'll start trying to like undercut you. Stuff start getting weird because they can't deal with that because they start realizing I'm maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was because they've been raised to believe they the best at everything. They the smartest, they the most intelligent, yada, yada, yada. 
So when they run into black folks, that's not. I'm not a fan of Obama's policy, but he did graduate Harvard Law and he did pass the bar exam. So he got to know something. Right. I'm not a fan of him as a politician, but he did graduate Harvard Law. So even if he got in because he was black, that don't get you out of the school. And he did pass the bar exam in the state that he was in. I think that was Illinois. So he got to have some level of intelligence. But if I'm a white dude in, you know, Walla Walla, Washington, and I got barely a high school education, I want to feel like I'm better than this guy because I can't accept that maybe it's some black people out here that are just way smarter than me. That's how they work. And they'll do that to Ben. As soon as, as soon as Ben Carson say something that they don't like, they'll act like Ben Carson they never did nothing in his life. That's how they do because they did it to Colin Powell. That's how they do. That's why I don't, I don't ice skate around their ass. That's just me, though. Everybody different. But I appreciate the $5 super chat. But yeah, they did the Obamas like that. Because they didn't like his uh his politics. I don't like his politics either. But the man actually went, he went to those schools and he graduated. I couldn't get into Harvard. If they let me into Harvard, I couldn't get out of that school. Right? I know that. If they was to let me in, I couldn't get out. That's it, Vic. He do come from that. I don't know if it's Swanson, but I know he do come from a family that made their money, I believe, in frozen foods. But that's how it goes, because I found out when I was in college that the one white dude that's gay, they used to be on CNN, that his mother was a Vanderbilt. I didn't know that. I also didn't know he was gay. I had an Asian chick tell me that. So these people be coming from money, don't even tell you. And they get on TV, act like they just regular folks and they come out of big money. Come out of big paper. Roscoe, man, appreciate the $5. It's crazy to me people talking about DEI but not talking about nepotism has put so many incompetent people in powerful positions. They don't care because they don't feel like nepotism is an advantage for black folks. Because if we noticed six months ago, they were talking about CTR. Right? The in-between that they was talking about uh, the don't say gay bill. You know, they just, this is, this is how they're fooling these folks. And I feel bad for them. Because they're not going to realize till it's too late that they pulled the rug up from them. You know, every country has a run. America has to start thinking about maybe we've had our run. And we're just going to go back to being a regular country now. Right? But they don't want to believe that so you can buy into it. But every country had a run. America has maybe had its run because we see all these billionaires and people with money. They got situations outside of America that when, when things go bad, they can go out there. Because they know that America's had its run. And there's no going back. We cannot go back to where the dollar was attached to gold. They're not going back to that. Right? That, that cow was already way out of the barn. It's down. It's out of the barn. It's in the field somewhere. It's not coming back. So pills and fentanyl are part of the Chinese plan. This cartel is getting compounds for China. I feel you. I don't know. I know that they doing the pills. Because I remember... Um, What's the name of that particular private company that sold the oxycodone? Do they have a connection to China? Because they made themselves a billionaire family pushing oxycodone and they did it to a level to where the AGs of certain states had to sue them because they said you flooding our communities with oxycodone. Because to me, where I'm from, that's where it started. It started with oxy. Didn't expand it to this other stuff. But when I was coming up, how we was moving, it was about them oxys. It was also about them Xanax bars. I don't know if, where you was at. That's what the play was. In Florida, especially South Florida, it was oxycodone and Xanax bars. Those was coming from U.S. pharmaceutical companies. They weren't coming from overseas. They was coming out of U.S. pharmaceutical, right? Where well, you could go to a doctor and say, I got a backache, and they give you a pill, they give you a prescription for oxycodone, and they would give you way more than what you needed for the month, and then you go flip them out on the street. That was the play. So Xanato says, tricking is one of the many reasons why I fell back on that space. I'm not going to have some goofball tell me they love us in that country while saying the main way to meet a woman is a trick. I feel you. Yeah, I mean, I could never, I, I can't, I'm, like I said, we from different, everybody from different structures. I ain't finna spend five minutes talking about tricks about tricking. 
I can't do it because my my issue and the people not going to I ain't going to say it because I don't want people to get the wrong impression. It's just the way I was raised. I got certain impressions, certain stuff. I never understood. Dudes being mad at women because they can't trick the way they want to trick what the women got to do with that. Go get you some money, bro. But that's me. So I never can hang around them dudes. And the top dudes in the space was tricks. No disrespect to Kevin Samuels because he passed away. We ain't trying to disrespect the man because he can't defend himself. But Kevin was a trick. And he was at a, he always was a trick. He didn't just become a trick when he got paid. He talked about being a trick. No disrespect to him, bro. But when your perspective on life is through the prism of being a trick, I, I can't do it, bro, because that ain't what we do on from home. We don't be tricking like that. Though. I can't do it, bro. But everybody different. So, you know, you got to let people do what they want to do. I wish prostitution was legal in America. But even if it was, I ain't finna indulge in it because, dog, I ain't tricking. I don't trick and I don't do strip clubs. I don't do none of that. I've been in one strip club of my life, and that's the last one I ever needed to go into. To me, the strip club, goofy. It's goofy. But, you know, everybody do what they do. I live in Atlanta, so I ain't going to try to down talk their money. Gary say a lot of black girls picked up the receptionist jobs. Yeah, in Florida, it's a lot of Latinas. You go to Central Florida, you go to see any place as a receptionist, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a Spanish chick. That's just what's going on right there. It's going to be a Spanish chick. So kind of, it's probably regional. Another thing I'll talk about is great inflation. I feel you. Yeah, Anderson Cooper. I forgot his name. Yeah, he feel Vanderbilt. Come from money. You know what I'm saying? Come from big paper. He ain't have to be like these people come from big, big, big money, man. And get on TV and act like they had to work a job to work their way through college. It's crazy. Erica, remember Beyonce was like being smart as cool when Obama came in. Yeah, he he changed the uh the perspective of a lot of stuff. Like I said, I don't like his politics, but uh he's smart. You, you take, like I said, I could go to Harvard, I wouldn't graduate. I think America has gas in the tank. A lot of people in the left hand not even know why. I think the I think the power structure has gas in the tank. But this is the thing, Mr. Roscoe. E, wealthy people are mobile. They're economically mobile. Right. So wealthy people can leave America, go somewhere else, live somewhere else and still benefit from America because they're economically mobile. But a lot of Americans, to me, are not going to be economically. They're not mobile. So whatever goes on in America, they're going to be stuck. And we know that from a demographic standpoint. America, 2040, 2050, 2060 is not even going to be majority white anymore. So we're undergoing a massive demographic change. And a lot of these, no disrespect to them, a lot of these Latinos that they're bringing over here, I, you're not supposed to say this, even though Trump said it, and he's right. For a lot of these people, they bring it from south of the border. They're not the best and the brightest of their people. They're just not. That's why they're trying to come to America. Right? They're not the best and the brightest. So we're getting people from the east. We're getting a different demo than a lot of people that we get from south of the border. It's not their fault 100% because they're coming from really, really bad situations. But they're coming here because they're not making it. So America has to ask themselves, what is this country going to look like when we're full of a lot of people who are not the best and the brightest of their land? And it's not really controlled like it was, you know, when the Irish immigration and the Italian immigration. But that's considered like stereotyping, yada, yada, yada. But it's really not. It's just being accurate about the situation. It's not saying they're bad people, but are they the best and the brightest of their people? Because I thought the goal of immigration was to do a brain drain from other countries. I didn't know the goal of immigration in the era that we're in now was just to take anybody that want to come over here. I didn't know that's what that's what they're doing because they need labor that bad. But it is what it is. I can't stop it. So it just is what it is. I saw something in uh, California the other day. They came in on a boat and they ran the boat up on shore. As soon as the boat got on shore, they all started running off the boat like it's crazy. This stuff is crazy. But, you know, as long as the petrol dollars in place, America's still going to be in position. But the leader, I don't know if that's going to happen anymore, unless they start a war and start getting rid of folks.
that made him be why they kept to keep their spot. But let's see how it plays out. Either way, I'm bullish on oil. Erica, they did they 10x didn't give the pills to black and Latinos because of racist doctors contributed to their own demise. I feel you. I can believe that. Yeah, that pill game was crazy in Florida. It was crazy. It was a whole nother level. All you had to do was go to the doctor, say you got a backache. They give you a prescription for oxycodone. Uh, go to the doctor, say you got anxiety, you don't want to be on the plane. They give you a prescription for Xanax. That's how they was getting all that stuff into the jails. Because the jails was full of drugs. And it was nothing but pills. It was crazy. So that's why I was telling somebody when I moved to Atlanta, I was like, man, you can't even sell cocaine in Florida no more. Nobody don't want it. Everybody just want pills. Okay, man, so that's going to be it. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Stay safe. Ask yourself, how can you solve problems? Uh, and I really encourage you, don't spend your time hanging around with a bunch of losers, regardless of what color skin they are, right? And just because they are a group of people that you think got some props or something, if they're losers in that group, why would you want to hang around them unless you got like a, a, a insecurity or self-confidence issue? Have fun. Talk to you later. Be safe.